In this video tutorial, we will use MindFusion Diagramming Library for WPF to create an application that enables the users to build and organize a school curriculum. We have a list with two types of nodes to the left. One of the nodes is a container, the other a custom shape node for the subjects. Each subject has three fields, the subject name, the teacher, and a remarks field. You can create nodes by drag and drop. When you select a node, you can see its properties in the grid to the left. You can edit the node's properties through this property grid. This is a custom control that comes with the MindFusion WPF diagram library as well as with the WPF control suite. When you drop a node on the container node, it gets automatically nested into this container. You can create links between the nodes in the container to show the correlation between them. We start by creating an empty WPF application. We call it Curriculum. We add references to the three DLL files that we'll need, MindFusion Common WPF, MindFusion Diagramming, and MindFusion Licensing. We have installed MindFusion WPF Pack and we reference the DLLs from there. Next, we add mappings to the two namespaces that we'll use in XAML. We have one called local to reference objects from the current namespace. We add to it MFC to reference classes from the mindfusion.ui.wpf namespace in the mindfusion common WPF assembly. We need this one for the property grid. We also add a diag mapping to create objects from the MindFusion diagramming namespace. We will leave the grid as the major layout container for our application. We create two grid columns. One is with fixed size of 250 pixels. The other column takes all the remaining space. We will use it for the diagram. Then we place a dock panel, which will occupy the first column. There, we will add the property grid and the custom node. We can create the property grid immediately. It is in the MindFusion common namespace that we've mapped with MFC. We adjust some settings on the property grid. We dock it to the bottom of the panel, set its header and margin. Next, we create an instance of the node list view control, which is in the diagramming namespace. The node list view is a list with arbitrary type of diagram shapes, which can be dragged and dropped onto the diagram. We docked it to the top and make it 240 pixels wide. We can add immediately a container node to the node list view. We set its caption height to 20 and make the caption be drawn with font Verdana, size 14, and bold. The bounds property specifies the size of the node icon in the list. We also use the enabled handles property to make adjustment handles appear around newly created nodes. We can create the diagram now. We initialize an instance of the diagram class in XAML and set some of its properties. We place it in grid column 1, set the back brush to white, and adjust the size of the diagram grid. We want the diagram to show with grid. You can switch off grid rendering with show grid set to false. The behavior property specifies how the diagram will respond to user actions. We set it to draw links, which means that the library will try to create connectors between diagram items. 
Allow in place edit enables the user to edit nodes interactively, and allow drop allows nodes to be created by dragging them from the node list. Now, if we run the application, we should be able to create and edit container nodes. Here we go. We drag a container, and when we drop it, a new node is created. When we select it, we see no properties to edit in the property grid. Let's change that. We will handle the node selected event of the diagram. In it, we will set the selected object property of the property grid to the selected node. Now, if we create a container and select it, we can see in the property grid its own properties. If we select all, we will see also the properties inherited from the base classes. The brush for the background is among the list, and we use it to change the color of the container. We can also edit its title. You see the title appears big and bold with Verdana font because we styled like that in the XAML declaration. We will build now the custom node class. It is called subject node, and we create a new class with this name. We also create a directory called themes and add a new XAML file called generic. As you know, in WPF, data templates for visual objects are stored here. In our template, we add a style for the subject node class, and there, we describe the data template for the new class. We use grid as a layout container, and in it, we add a rectangle with stroke and a background property. Next, we add another grid with a vertical stack panel. In it, we add three text blocks, one for each field that we want our custom diagram node to have. Subject, Teacher, and Remarks. Let's add them to the Subject Node class now. First, we make the Subject Node class derive from Templated Node and use the Static Constructor to override the default style for the Subject Node class with the style we created in the Generic Theme class. We create now the three dependency properties that render in the three text blocks in the template. They are subject, teacher, and remarks. We set an empty string as a default value to all of them. Then we need to add another constructor, which is necessary because we want subject node instances to be created through drag and drop. In it, we need to bind the properties of the class to those of the prototype. We need to declare one more class, the class that lists the properties of subject node so that the property grid will know which properties to list and of what type. We call this class subject node properties, and in it we list as fields all four properties of subject node together with their type. The class derives from diagram node properties. In order to make the property grid render correctly the subject node properties, we need to override three methods, create properties, save properties, and restore properties. In create properties, we create an instance of the subject node properties class. 
In save properties, we assign to the subject node properties instance the values from the current subject node. In restore properties, we do the opposite. We assign to the values of the current subject node the values from the provided subject node properties. And we see that we have forgotten to declare the background dependency property. Let's add it now. Now we need only to add an instance of the subject node to the node list view in the XAML template for our application. We adjust some of the properties like size and the default values of the text fields. If we run the program, we will see the node list view with its two node instances, the subject node and container node. If we drag and drop a subject node, you can see that we can edit its properties in the property grid. We create a container. We can also edit all of its properties through the grid. Let's add the subject node to the container. We can move them simultaneously now. We create another container. When we drop a node onto it, it gets automatically resized to accommodate it. We can create connections between the nodes in the container. One more thing is missing though. If we drag and drop a node directly onto a container, it does not get added to it automatically. We can change that. We need to handle the node created event. In it, we will get the location of the newly created node and we call the diagrams get nodes at method. It returns a collection of all diagram nodes containing this point. We cycle through the collection, and if we find that it contains a container, we add the new node to its items. Let's run the application now. We create a container, drop a subject node onto it. Yes, now it does get added to the container automatically. And that's the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.